Welcome back to the studio. My name is Yaku. Behind the camera is the mic. That's Lugo outside. <laughs> He's like, hey, what about me? You asked about laser welding in the jewelry industry, and that's what, exactly what we're going to talk about. This is part one of the video. Why is it part one, Demai? Because the original video was very long. So we thought we'd cut it up into three bits. We've been doing that now. If you wanted the videos to be longer, again, this is a channel that's completely steered by you. So you just let us know. We just decided to go through to Freeform Fabrications. We met up with Matt and we had a nice long conversation. The conversation we had was exactly about the comments that we had in this video. It just shows you how the comments come from your keyboard to our workshop and then yes. through to the professionals when it comes down to dealing exactly with this one issue. I hope you enjoy this conversation with Matt from Freeform Fabrications. Matt is, what is your position? What would you call um, yourself? Is it, uh, yeah, it's tricky. Product specialist is what we generally use. So. Product specialist yeah, is what yeah. we want to so use, yeah. Laser welding and laser engraving is my, my forte. It's speciality. Yeah, yeah. Product specialist Matt is going to answer the questions that we have from the internet and hopefully that will satisfy the uh, the quest for knowledge, I suppose. <laughs> the first one I've got you is, uh, could you give us some tips on prong retipping and ring resizing? This is one thing I've spoke to Paul about. So Paul is our goldsmith. He's our, uh, the tutor that we use to run our laser welding workshop. So yeah. first thing you've got to think about when retipping is protecting stones. So um, we use blue tack or white tack because it's uh, malleable, uh, moldable. You can push it right in next to all the claws so that if- oh, right. You know, sometimes it happens, you do miss um, or accidentally press the pedal when you don't mean to or something like that. Yeah. So that'll just mean that your stone's protected, especially colored stones, they, they attract the laser quite nicely. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you hit, hit a stone with the laser, you're gonna put a lovely little hole in it and you've got to source a new stone <laughs> then. So a bit of blue tack, white tack, a decent chunk, put that in there, push it right into all the claws so that if you do miss, you're, you're protected. And it's just a case of building up the tip, really. So you've got laser wire, um, which is about 0.3 mil, so really, really thin. And you can use that laser wire to build on top. So right. laser the wire straight onto the tip. Right. Melt it in, break it off, melt it in, break it off, and then you can hit it down with the without the wire there, and it actually domes it oh, nicely. Right. Okay. So the wire gets used in the traditional sense, like where yeah. we add solder on top of it. This yeah, is basically that, like that, a solder. That's where you're adding material using oh, right. that laser wire. Now you don't have to use laser wire all the time. What you can do is draw down some of say your scrap rings or something like that right, right, so and you... snip them into small strips. Uh, so, it just, so you can it's... use, it doesn't have to be laser wire that you buy in. Oh, you right, can use okay. what you've already got. So it'll save a bit of money. Mm. And then also, yeah, it's obviously recycling. Okay. Um, what would have so gone So it's metal scrap. on metal basically. So there's, it's, it's, it's got to be a contact point. Okay. Otherwise, the, the wire won't melt onto the tip or onto, onto the what you're working on. So mm. the key thing is if your laser wire is balling up, mm. it means it's not actually touching where you wanted it to gotcha. go. Gotcha. If it's touching and you're using the right power, it will melt nicely into that. Okay. Sizings. Um, it's all about technique. So if you are if you just butt things end to end and go all the way round, mm. that's where laser welding got a stigma maybe of brittle joints. It's yeah. because it's hollow in the middle. Yeah. So that's where if you file a V through, so either side, say if you're putting a piece in, you just have to do it twice, either side of the piece you're putting in. Right. So file all the way through. Yeah. So you, you end up like this. Obviously you want that nice and sharp at the bottom right. there. Tack up the bottom and then again, fill with the laser wire or whatever drawn down metal that ah, you've got. I see what got. you're saying. So you're basically building it up from the inside up with, yeah, solid, with solid metal. That's it. So and then the, you've got contact all the way to the exactly. top of the shank. So add a layer of wire, then take the wire away, hit it down with the laser yeah. to compact it, make sure it's nice and uh, compact within that joint. That's yeah. Last thing we want is to have like air pockets in there. Well, that's Again, exactly what I've, the same this is what I've experienced from some of the work that's come back from other places to yeah. my workshop where it's people happened. have gone, I, I, we've tried this, um, they've obviously used the laser, it's it's cracking, it's breaking, can you yeah. just do a proper joint on this for us? Yeah. But with your technique that you're referring to, that's 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 a completely new sort of concept yeah. to, to what we would typically do on the bench. Yeah. Where we yeah. want to try and get them to butt up right up against each other. So and that makes sense now. Thank you very much for clarifying. That's all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, we were again talking about the workshop. So we'll we'll do that in a workshop. This might be the first time you've done it in this work, workshops that we do. Yeah. And Paul will get them around and he'll tap it up two sizes. 
right, it won't right, crack. Yeah. If you were thinking about doing sizings uh, with laser machines and you've been scared because of these brittle sort of joints, this is exactly the technique. And I guess you could sign up if you're in the UK to free from fabrications workshops and so, explain this in fine detail. Yeah, yeah. So we, we do sort of the full day technical sort of going through each technique uh, yeah. from jump rings, bolt rings, chains, porosity repair and all of uh, re-tipping, clawing and ring joining. But then we also do traveling workshops as well. So we've been to Nottingham Jewelry School. We're going to Bristol next month. Um, we've been worked with The Forge uh, with their workshops. So we're, we're, we're traveling around with it. So it's not just you've got to come to near London in Stevenage to, um, right. to do it. We're, we're coming around the country as well. They mentioned two things here in the next question. Is it able to weld platinum and silver? Yeah, yeah. Platinum, I, I, would, I would say, is probably one of the better metals to work with. It's amazing. It melts so nicely yeah. on the laser. The reason I have such respect for it is because when, when I close up a ring, for instance, when I, do, let's say, for instance, just do a normal wedding band, when we bring it together with gold and silver, you would typically use solar and, you know, use the harder solder you've got. Mm -hmm. But platinum actually allows you to, to to fuse it together. So yeah. you would bring the two parts together, slide in a slice of very thin, very similar to what you were explaining with regards to what the laser does. Mm -hmm. Slide in a slice of thin platinum, bring the two parts together and then melt that platinum. And when it reaches this point, it actually just melts onto it. So you've got right. an absolutely, you know, something with absolutely no joint that opens up. So yeah. very similar to what you're doing with the laser, but just on, a, on the bench. A lot of the reason why people ask about platinum is obviously, because normally you're thinking you have to heat it up to a really extremely high temperatures. But, so people think you need extra power on the laser, but yeah. it's not, it's about conductivity. Um, so that's why silver is harder to work on on a laser because of the how opposite of highly... platinum with regards to its density, it's, mm -hmm. it's molecular, molecular structure. Yeah, and it, it moves the energy. So when you fire the laser, it moves the energy really quickly. That's exactly what it does yeah. with, on the bench as well. You see, yeah. with platinum, I can concentrate very much on one spot, mm -hmm. whereas silver almost needs to be heated the entire item to be able to work right here. Mm -hmm. but platinum is a curious thing because you have usually when you've got something like a diamond or a gemstone set on it, yeah. this machine will really make, uh, will really stand on its own because you've got, you, you typically, the stones, even a diamond won't handle the heat yeah. that platinum requires to work with it properly. So we typically have to take the stones out to make sure that they don't burn. Yeah. Whereas with a laser, you can just bypass the entire exactly. thing and go straight right there yeah. where you want to work. Yeah, and with platinum, there won't be any sold lines on there either. Yeah, of yeah. course, I know that can be an issue. That is a nightmare with platinum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So do. on dragging after polishing and things like that. Yeah, so yeah. that's where the laser again is going to save that kind of issue with platinum, especially. Now silver, um, had, you had a tip on silver as well with regards to. So black it out. So the, the laser is essentially hot light. So it, it likes dark things. Um, no. So if you use Sharpie, something like that. So over the um, area where you're going to be working, exactly. you, you just black it out with black it out Sharpie, with Sharpie does the job. There's lots of different ways that people do it. Um, there's no contamination with that. With no, a, no, with it burns, it burns off burns enough, when, you, yeah. when, you, when you laser it. So you leave quite comfortably behind. say that the machine can handle silver. Heat. Yeah, just blacking it out will do the job. So um, the Dado 1 is 50% less powerful than the Dado 2 here. All right. So the Dado 2 is a big improvement improvement in that so it makes it your life a lot easier when working with silver just having that boost of power because right that's right. what you need the extra power for working on silver or anything conductive if you're working yeah, on yeah, other yeah. metals so blacking it out will help so the Dado 2 one will still work on it you'll still with blackening it out you'll still be able to work on silver just not as effectively as higher power machines platinum and silver not a problem at all you'll be able to work on both brilliant you got it from Matt He's the product specialist. <laughs> yeah, they're asking, um, is there some way to protect the stones when you must work close to them? You've already covered that with regards yeah. to the blue tech. You can also, you know, use use like a blade or something sharp, a file maybe that if you push right up between the stone and the core. Yeah, I find the blue tack and white tack yeah. works pretty well, but there's there's other ways. Um, I know uh, one way uh, is hand cream. People have used hand cream, cover the stone in hand cream so it just reflects yeah. the laser off. But I mean, the laser is pretty precise. If you give yourself time when you've got the laser, yeah. you after after sort of six months to a year, yeah. a lot of people get to the point where they stop protecting stones because they yeah. know the, the laser's calibrated well and they'll feel really comfortable. But yeah. I'm a cautious person, yeah. so I will um, probably <laughs> cover it. I'm a child at heart. So <laughs> you, you were talking about colored stones and that's one of the yeah. first things I've done 
you know, it's good take, way. Some, take some colored stones and I held them down there and I, and I shot little holes it's right It's a good way because you'll know, you'll know if sometimes, maybe you might nick it but not yeah, realize it. Yeah. So if you don't, haven't hit a stone, yeah. you don't know what's going to happen when you do. So We had a chat about this beforehand. This is ultimate control when it comes down to the machine yeah. itself. Your hands rest in uh, into the machine and you've got a very small area with a very precise sort of cross that you focus on, bring it into mm -hmm. focus. Yeah. And it's all about the regulation of your of your laser. And this yeah. is the uh, the little dial inside where you mm -hmm. can go from green to red yeah, or yeah. on the phone as you, as yeah, you, yeah, as you got it. it. So if you play around with these things, I, I believe with, you know, just by playing around with it, you're gonna get the, the happy medium there. But you, you really have no reason why you should hit a stone because no, it is really so You're firing into 0 0.2 mil. Yeah, you're zoomed in ten you're times. Stabilized it's and nice and clear. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, you you should be fine. But it's just it, again, it's just being cautious. Matt takes um, no responsibility on any stones being damaged on this. Yes, the training. Really clear. <laughs> we, should, we should mention that beforehand. Yeah, yeah. Please explain what each adjust, adjustment does and how they interact with each other. You've got the bigger lasers that have more settings, mm. um, but the Dado has a few that you can change. So Dado one has twelve power settings. The Dado two. 25. That is about power. On the Dado one, I would say you're doing some finer work on powers one or two, maybe jump rings, you might up it to three or four, depending on the metal, of course. This is, say, working on gold. You might do a resize on slightly higher for up to six to eight, or maybe up to 10, depending on the size of it. So you have a variable so, dial for the, for the strength, yeah. that's the first one. And then uh, you also have the button You've at the, the top yeah. that spreads out the, so the focus of the laser. It, for most of the jobs, you want to use the smallest beam size because you want all that power making a nice strong weld. Where then you finish the job, say you've done a resize, you've built up all the laser wire, you've built up above the surface a little bit, it'll still look a bit messy and that's fine. Uh, we don't need to worry about it at that point because as you say, we can widen that beam. Mm. When you widen that beam, you'll have to increase the power a little bit because instead of firing into 0.2, you're, you're firing the, into it's, say it's one, it, it goes right. up to 1.5 mil. I personally don't bring it all the way back. I will mm. sort of bring it all the way back and then inch it forward a little bit. Mm. Um, and that will smooth so um, that's why you need the extra power because you're just smoothing that top surface out. So rather than, you're not making the join stronger, you're just making your polishing job that much easier. So we've really only got two areas where you should be concerned about if you're buying a laser machine like this. You've got the, 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 the focus area and then you've got the intensity. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, that's with the Dado 1. The only other thing you can change on the Dado 2 is shots per second. Oh, right. So you right. can fire at four shots per second instead of one shot. Is there a set distance which uh, you must stay within the world, uh, like a focal point? Oh, okay. So yeah, the, the scope and the laser are focused on the same point. Mm. So where it comes really clear and focused as you're looking through the microscope yeah. is where the laser is going to fire its strongest. If you're down, it will be out of focus and it won't fire anything. If you're too high, it will be out of focus and it won't yeah, fire anything. Yeah. So if it's you, got when the, you're in that focal point... When you get point, perfect ba balance when it's absolutely clear and you know you're yeah. ready to shoot. Yeah, and that's, right. that's all about muscle memory after a certain amount of time. Um, I, I'll jump on a dado and I, I don't even think about it anymore. My hands just go straight there and we start working. I do have the benefit of working with microscopes before working with freeform, so that, yeah. that did help. Yeah. Um, but it's just about getting used to, giving yourself time to get used to that muscle yeah. memory. Yeah. But that was the one about the distance. Can you talk about the water change? How frequently yeah. And, and what amount to use? Firstly, it's deionized water. There's, there's two ways. Obviously, we've got the Dado 2, and now we have the benefit of, of this. That's mm -hmm. where the water tank is. Right. And you can use that. So you've got the, the top half of the water tank and the bottom half. Mm -hmm. And there's obviously where, the, where they join. You want it to be an inch or two below mm -hmm. where they join. Oh, and right, that's okay. a good level. Yeah. I think if you checked it every six months, you'll be fine. All right, okay. As a general I mean, rule, with... some people that are just using it for, say, tacking mm. and things like not using it in terms of heavy repairs, mm. then you could probably get away with checking once a year. To be honest, it's got to do with cooling, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, leaving it on in standby is fine. You're not going to lose much water doing it that way. If you're, if you're making the machine overheat mm. because of the heavy use, which is fine, it cuts out before it damages itself. So you know, you, you, if it overheats, it's not a major issue. Mm. But if it's happening after five minutes rather than after like 20 minutes like mm. it would normally, that's obviously a sign that you probably need to put a bit more water in there. Right, right, right. Obviously that's the Dado 2 has this gauge. The Dado 1 doesn't have that, um, or at least older models of the Dado 1 won't mm. have that. Maybe some of the new ones will, but um, 
That's where you can pop the back spot off where you put the water in initially yeah. and then just shine a light and shake the machine and you should see the see water the level. level in there. Are you still selling the the ones or are you yeah. moving away from that? Is that still we, something we, that's on the market? Yeah, it is. Um, it's not generally, it's, it's 500 pound difference. Okay, so mostly people will Most go, well, people are just you jumping don't go up for the power. to the two. Yeah, because of the benefits of it. Of course, I know it's a question coming up, so I can answer <laughs> that in a bit more depth. Um, but it's it's worth having that extra power for, yeah. for that silver work. Just in terms of, of the maintenance, it, it's just a case of just wipe out this chamber every so often. Mm. And then there's a protective lens on, on the microscope there. Mm. If you wipe that with a bit of alcohol or something like that, just mm. to make sure your vision is still nice and clear. Yeah. So cleaning the scope every so often. It's pretty maintenance free. There's not a lot, it's just, it's dust. Mm. Um, so I mean, to try be... to keep it away from the polishing machine, hopefully, ideally polishing in a separate room Everything would be, should would be, be lovely. Everything from the polishing machine. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, of course. Like with, yeah, I'm sure with any of your equipment, you yeah. want it away from all that dust. So yeah. um, the other end of the place to check is to lift, move the machine and wipe underneath. There's a fan underneath oh, as well. Oh, there's a fan underneath as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. But okay. other than that, that it's pretty maintenance That's free. made for a workshop. Oh yeah, they're, they're pretty robust. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they're not, um, they're not, they, they can handle some, don't make me wrong, because not every, you, you can't avoid dust completely. <laughs> you can't keep it in a sterile environment. Not, not it's not a, how workshops not work. A, not in a my, workshop. In my experience of going to visit many hundreds at this point, uh, yeah, <laughs> you can't keep them dust free, so. Fair enough, man. All right, I hope that answers the question. That's it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed the conversation so far. If you had any questions that are not answered, please watch the second part because there's a, the rest of the questions that we had from you guys are going to be answered in that video. See you guys next week. Stay creative. Is that our thing now? Stay creative. Cheers. Bye. <laughs> Yaku rolls away, sips his coffee and turns. <laughs> <laughs>